everyone. You may be receiving IVF treatment soon. The following video gives more information on ovarian stimulation in IVF. IVF refers to the medical procedure where the egg is fertilized by sperm outside the body, forming embryos followed by transfer of the embryo back into the womb. The procedures in IVF include several steps. Stimulation of ovaries, egg collection, sperm washing and fertilization of eggs, and embryo transfer. And here I'll talk about the prediction of number of eggs obtained, the drugs and self-injection, monitoring of ovarian response, criteria for egg collection as well as cycle cancellation, the timeline of IVF as well as possible complications arising from the IVF treatment. Prediction of eggs obtained. The number of eggs obtained after ovarian stimulation is strongly associated with the life birth rate. The optimal number of eggs collected is 15. To predict the number of eggs before the first IVF cycle, there are two commonly used markers. The antral follicle count, which is determined on ultrasound, or antimullerian hormone, which is a blood test. Both have similar efficacy, and there's no benefit when combining both markers. The antral follicles can be seen as dark circles on ultrasound. This is an example of poor ovarian reserve, where the antral follicle count is only one at the right ovary and one in the left ovary. In contrast, this is an example of a patient with good ovarian reserve, where the antral follicle count is 10 on each side. The higher the antral follicle count, the more likely is that there will be higher number of eggs collected. I'll go through the drugs and self-injection used in ovarian stimulation. During the stimulation of ovaries, you will receive daily injections of gonadotrophins from day two to five of the period to stimulate growth of the follicles. We will add antagonists daily from day six of stimulation to prevent ovulation before the planned egg collection. Both FSH and antagonist have to be continued daily. These photos shows the drugs commonly used in self-injection. On the left side are the FSH, whereas on the right side is the antagonist. There may be different gonadotrophins available. In both of them, self-injection can be performed and there are no differences between the two preparations in terms of the number of eggs obtained and the pregnancy rates. Monitoring of ovarian response. This is an ultrasound clip taken during monitoring of ovarian response. You can see that the ovaries are enlarged from stimulation. The size of the follicles are measured by ultrasound. The stimulation of ovaries take roughly 10 to 12 days in average. It may be different for different women and in some situations may be longer. For example, in the presence of obesity, smoking, chocolate cyst, advanced age, or poor ovarian response. 
criteria for egg collection. HCG or gonadotrophin releasing hormone agonist injections are required for egg maturation. If these injections are not given, the eggs cannot be obtained. Agonist trigger is used in cases of excessive ovarian response. But in these situations, the embryos need to be frozen and fresh transfer will not be performed. These are the photos of the commonly used injection, HCG, and GnRH agonist used for egg maturation. Criteria for cycle cancellation. Egg collection will be arranged even if only one follicle develops, although there is risk that no oocyte will be obtained. In some situations, the IVF cycle has to be cancelled. For example, if there is no growth after prolonged ovarian stimulation at high doses, or if there is rupture of follicle and ovulation on scanning prior to egg collection. I will then talk about the timeline of IVF. This diagram illustrates nicely the timeline of IVF. In the ovarian stimulation phase, which takes an average of 10 to 12 days, daily FSH will be given to stimulate the ovaries. Antagonist will be added to prevent premature ovulation and ultrasound monitoring of the follicles will be performed. When the follicles are large enough on ultrasound, HCG or agonist trigger will be administered and egg collection will be arranged 36 hours later. After the eggs are being collected, they will be fertilized with the sperm to form embryos. Two to five days later, the embryo is transferred back into the womb Generally, we advise transferring one embryo each time. Pregnancy test is performed 14 days after embryo transfer. To summarize, around 70% of follicles that we see on ultrasound contain eggs. And around 8 to 10 eggs are aspirated in each IVF cycle. Of course, this is different for different women. In addition, not all the eggs will be fertilized. An average of 70% of eggs are fertilized, and not all of them would continue to develop as embryos. We advise replacing one embryo each time. The cumulative life birth rate after one IVF cycle is around 40 to 50 percent. IVF is also associated with possible complications including multiple pregnancy, ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome, pelvic infection, bleeding, as well as increased congenital abnormalities of the fetus. Ovarian stimulation is associated with possible complications as illustrated in the following slides. Ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome occurs in some women and they present with abdominal distension, vomiting, ovarian cysts and have fluid in the abdomen and the lungs. Ovarian stimulation for IVF may also increase the risk of ovarian cancer but the evidence is not conclusive. Often this is limited to patients with certain characteristics. The ovaries are much enlarged in ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome. The symptoms and signs to look out for include nausea, shortness of breath, sometimes because of fluid in the lungs, fluid in the abdomen, 
as well as a reduced urine output. If these situations are encountered, you must seek medical attention immediately. If you have any questions, feel free to ask us anytime. You can also visit our website for more information. The link is shown in this slide. We also have Facebook and Instagram accounts, and you can visit our page for the latest information. Thank you for listening to this talk. If you have any questions, you can reach us as follows. The phone number is a voice bell most of the time. You can leave a message with your name, Hong Kong ID card, as well as contact number, and our nurse will get back to you.